A common way to plant things such as trees is to plant seedlings. However, planting seedlings can be expensive and or time consuming. Is there an alternative? Can we, in some situations at least, simply put the seeds directly into the ground where we want them to grow? If so, how can we protect what we have planted so it can flourish? Let's explore some ideas. Imagine you could put a tree seed in the ground every six or seven seconds while out for a walk in a wild place in nature. That would be about 500 trees that you will have planted in an hour. Or if this becomes a habit, 10,000 trees in 20 hours. Of course, not all the tree seeds will germinate and they won't all grow, but there are ways we can ensure that many of them will germinate and many of them will grow to become mature, healthy trees. First, we look around at the land. What is growing there already? What is growing in similar places? Or what has grown there in the past? We can use the Highlands of Scotland as an example. Many small trees have emerged in the last few years as the sheep have been removed from some of the marginal land of the Highlands. Much of the land here used to be forest, but most of the forest was cut down a long time ago. When the forest was removed, so were the creatures who helped maintain the forest by spreading seeds. We can help the forest to return by spreading seeds and especially by getting tree seeds into the ground. By putting tree seeds into the ground, we're helping to restore the cycle of life so that the forest and the creatures which will sustain the forest can return. However, we need to plant the right things in the right places and in the right ways to make our efforts effective. First, we need to take time to look, to look carefully at the land. For example, if we look carefully at what is happening in the highlands, we see that new trees often emerge out of the heather. They grow up out from within the heather plant, and since they are often healthy looking, this gives us a clue. Heather is a small shrub, which is very common in the highlands and in most of Europe. Heather tends to grow in acidic soil, so this gives us information about the type of soil we're wanting to plant in. There's no point in planting things here which will not do well in acidic soil. We need to start with pioneer species suited to the area and the acidic soil. In our case, one of these pioneer species is the Scots pine tree. We need to plant things which are likely to produce new generations, will support other types of local plants, and which will help the local wildlife return to that area. In these ways, we will help to create forests and bring back wildlife that can support each other for many generations to come. There is always the risk that emerging seedlings grown in the wild will be eaten by animals. But as you may have realised that we can plant the seeds amongst the heather and other similar places so that they will have some natural protection. If we have a plentiful supply of seeds, we can even mass plant and spread out clusters so that there will be so many new trees emerging that most of them will survive. Once they reach maturity, the trees themselves, of course, will produce seeds to help recreate the forest. Scots pine is a type of tree in which the roots of individual trees can join together to share water and nutrients. Therefore, for long-term survival, Scots pine trees are best planted in clusters rather than single trees so that they can support each other. Of course, we need an effective way to plant the seeds. One way of doing this is to use a rewilding seed stick, otherwise known as a rewilding wand. A rewilding wand can be made using simple tools from a hollow metal walking stick or a piece of metal pipe. Modifying a hollow metal walking stick is often the easiest and cheapest way to make one. All you need to do is make a hole near the top of the stick for seeds to go in, pull the walking stick apart and remove anything which would obstruct the seeds of the size you will be sowing, and make a blade about an inch long out of the bottom end of the stick. You make a blade by cutting out a half section from the bottom tube of the walking stick and then flattening the remaining bit. It takes a bit of practice to use the rewilding wand effectively. It needs different techniques for different types of seeds and for different types of soil. 
especially when the soil is muddy. It's best to stay with one type of seed and avoid muddy soil if you can till you become more proficient. It is early days for the rewilding one. It needs more people to experiment with it, make different versions for different purposes and to try out different planting techniques to match different needs. However, I've already seen many smiles of delight and comments like this is amazing from those who have tried the first prototype versions. If there's enough interest, I'll make some videos on how to make and how to use a rewilding wand. The rewilding wand obviously isn't going to be the answer for every situation, but it could be very useful in many situations. Something which allows us to get 10,000 seeds into the ground in about 20 hours of work deserves thinking about. It deserves more people doing their own experiments with it and chaining their results. Perhaps you're one of those people. But that's it for now. May future generations bless us for the lovely forests, bountiful orchards and beautiful wildflower meadows that we leave for them. May future generations bless you for the lovely forests, bountiful orchards and beautiful wildflower meadows that you leave for them.